Hi everyone. We are very pleased to present our research from Sydney, Australia. My name is Leanne Loke. With my colleague Nasima Madpour, we will present on behalf of our co-authors. Five million adults in Australia live with unresolved childhood trauma. That is 20% of the population. Trauma is defined as the emotional, psychological and physiological residue left over from heightened stress that accompanies experiences of threat, violence and life-challenging events. For children, trauma can result from neglect and separation from parents and families. The Red Bank House Clinic provides an integrated system of care, including assessment and treatment plans for children from 0 to 12 years of age with trauma backgrounds. The therapy approach at Red Bank House is grounded in theories of neuroscience that explain the need to establish feelings of safety and reduce threat in cultivating social-emotional learning. When the arousal threshold goes from friend to threat, children are no longer open to verbal communication or to learning. In the clinical paradigm of Red Bank House, an adult is viewed as a resource for the co-regulation of emotion with the child. Therapists are trained to facilitate a child's ability to manage emotions through co-regulation strategies that move a child from high arousal to a lower level amenable to a learning mindset. Our research questions are how to support the process of social-emotional learning, which involves reflection for behavior change. As HCI researchers, we were keen to understand how to work with therapists in the sensitive settings involving clients. We conducted a contextual inquiry to understand the practice and context of the Red Bank House Clinic. We chose the activity of reflective storytelling as a key example of social emotional learning in the clinic. We then explored how to integrate design research into therapy activities through co-designing with therapies a workshop on reflective storytelling for children and parents. We then ran the workshop with lived, with invited children and parents who were clients at the clinic. Before conducting the workshop with children and parents, we pilot tested it with the therapy team. On arrival to the workshop, the child, the child was scheduled playtime to allow them to become calm and downregulate their arousal as such a, suggested by the clinical team. A warm-up activity was conducted to help the child establish rapport with the team. A nine-year-old child and his father participated in the workshop. They used our reflective storytelling kit to reflect upon the past experience and how they might approach it differently next time, similar to therapy. Now we present our framework, with its emphasis on establishing safety and connection prior to reflection. The progression of the social emotional needs of the child go from safety to relatedness to empathy to social resilience. The process is broken into three experience phases of pre-reflection that is cultivating the ability to reflect, reflection itself and post-reflection. It is based on the experience design framework of Hasenthal et al. The middle layer highlights the key activities facilitated by the therapist based on the phase of the experience and the needs of the child. We combine the clinic's therapy strategies with Slovak et al's emphasis on scaffolding for transformative reflective experiences. In learning to regulate emotions, a role of scaffolding is to generate a situation in which a reflective experience can occur while controlling the emotional strength to maintain a learning mindset. We highlight some challenges and opportunities raised by our research. It is not easy to work with vulnerable children and parents in clinical contexts. It is important to identify the value of participation for them. Clinicians can play different roles as informants or proxies for their clients. In working with vulnerable children, we recommend minimizing triggers of threat and ensuring feeling of safety in children. As researchers, we need to be present and connect with the clients, just like the therapists, and creating a version of the therapy activity to enable the researchers to engage with the clients. We hope our framework can help in assessing and guiding future design to support the process of reflection in social-emotional learning.